Hello and welcome, I'm Ken Gardy from Stats Comprehensive and in this video we will look at playing the chromatic scale. Now if you already know how to play some of the notes on the saxophone you can skip this section, just use the timestamp at the bottom to get to the next section where you can play along to the finger charts which are to a beat. You can speed it up and slow it down by using the YouTube playback speed in the settings. However, if you're not familiar with playing the notes on the saxophone, then stay here and I will talk you through playing the chromatic scale, which is all of the notes on the saxophone from the low B flat right up to the high F sharp. And I will give you some tips on how to play those notes and also give you some alternate fingerings for it. So stay tuned. So let's get started with this first section. You want to rest your hands in their correct resting positions. The hands are labelled the thumb, one, two, three, and the pinky finger. Your left thumb goes on a thumb rest with part of it extended over the octave key so you can press it. The fingers one, two, three are on the pearls as shown, and the pinky finger will rest comfortably anywhere on the pad. Your right thumb goes under the thumb hook, and your fingers one, two, three are on the pearls shown, while your pinky finger rests comfortably on one of the two keys. As we go through these fingerings, check either the diagrams to make sure that you are pressing down the right keys, and above all, listen to what you are playing to make sure that it is moving in a chromatic fashion. If it doesn't sound right, then check the diagrams again. Also try to play these notes without removing your fingers from the keys. Imagine your fingertips are glued to the keys so they never come totally off the keys. When practicing the chromatic scale, go slowly at first to improve your technique, then gradually speed up so you're not making mistakes. You could use a metronome to help. We will look at the fingerings in groups of notes, starting with the low B flat, B, C, and C sharp. The reason for this is that in order to play these notes, you only need to concentrate on your left pinky finger. Do not press the octave key while playing these notes. So first finger the low B flat note, which is one, two, three on both hands, and the left pinky is on the low B flat key, which is the lowest of the left pad, and the right pinky is on the C key, which is the lowest of the two keys. This may be a stretch for your fingers. Now from this position, as was said already, you will only need to move your left pinky, so keep the other fingers pressed down and don't worry about them. To move from the low B flat to the low B, keep your pinky finger down on the B flat key, and while still in the down position, slide it to the B key. Do not lift up your pinky finger. You will need to get used to sliding your finger between these two keys. You would have to do this if you were not tongue in the notes. To get the low C, simply release your pinky finger, and while playing the low C, move your pinky finger straight back over the C sharp key to get ready to play it. Then when you are ready to play the C sharp note, press down the C sharp key. One way to remember these fingerings is to think about slide, up and back. Moving on to the next group of fingerings from low D up to C sharp, the reason why we are grouping these notes together is because once you have played them, you will play them again, but this time with the octave key pressed. It is the same fingerings. First you play them without the octave key, and then you play them again with the octave key. So from C sharp to play low D, release both pinky fingers at the same time. Now your left hand will stay in this position for some time, so you only need to concentrate on your right hand. While playing the low D, move your right pinky to the E flat key, getting ready to press it. And when you're ready to play the E flat note, press down on the E flat key. For E, release your pinky finger and the finger above that together. Make sure you release these two fingers at the same time. So here on the right hand, we have the two fingers, one and two, still on the keys, and we can learn the fingerings by looking at the movement patterns of these two fingers. So from here, lifting the lower finger gives us F, Swapping the two fingers so that the lower of the two fingers is pressed down gives us F sharp. Make sure that you swap these fingers quickly so that no other note sounds between the F and the F sharp. And lastly, releasing this finger gives us G. For G sharp, use your left pinky to press down the G sharp key. For A, release your left pinky finger and the finger above that at the same time make sure you release both these fingers at the same time. B flat has many different fingerings, but probably the easier of these, moving from the A fingering, is to press the side B flat key, which is the lowest of the side keys. To do that, you keep your fingers resting on the keys, but you move your hands so that you press the side B flat key with the side of your right number one finger. 
Alternatively, you could press one in your left hand and either one, two or three in the right hand. They all work. The last way of playing B flat is to use a bis key, which is the smaller pearl key. Press the B key and the bis key down together. There are different ways of going about playing this note. Usually you have one finger over the two notes in such a way as you can swivel your finger to toggle between the two notes, the B by itself and the B with the bis key. Some musicians will leave their finger over the B key and roll it over the bis key. If you do not have to play B in a piece of music, you may want to leave your finger over the two keys as your resting position. In normal playing, you need to choose which B flat fingering is best for moving from or to another note. So it's worth learning to play all these fingerings as your choice may help you to play passages faster and cleaner. Now for B, C and C sharp, it is the same finger patterns that we used before. For B, we have the one finger pressed down only. Next, do the swap with the finger below it, but make sure you do it quickly. This gives us C and then release this finger to give us C sharp. Then from here, you're going to play all those fingerings again, starting with low D, but this time you're going to use the octave key. So from here, you can follow the diagrams again. When playing these sets of notes again the second time with the octave key pressed down, you may have noticed two problems. Some people find that playing this mid C sharp fingering where there are no keys pressed difficult to play in tune. You may have to manipulate your throat and oral cavity to get it into tune. Some musicians that find it really difficult on their saxophone to play this C sharp in tune may finger the low C sharp but use the octave key with it. This is one way to get the note to sound more in tune, but the tonal quality of the note will be different. The second problem is that moving from C sharp to D is a jump from a short tubing of the saxophone, since no keys are pressed, to a larger tubing of the saxophone where many keys are pressed, and the tonal quality moving between these two notes will change. You would have to practice exercises in order to keep the tonal quality the same over this jump as well as over various registers. This is what separates the professionals from the rest of us who just play for fun. The next group of fingerings are from high D to high F sharp. I will start by using the palm keys, which is the easiest way to play these notes and afterwards go back to show you the alternative fingerings. To play these notes is a matter of remembering the order of the keys to press. To play high D, press the D palm key. Try to keep your fingers on the pole and move your wrists so that you press the D palm key with the side of your one finger. In order to do this, you may have to take your fingers off the pearls, especially if you have big hands. This is not a big problem, but some people will use palm key risers or build their own palm key risers in order to address this problem. To play E flat, also press down the E flat palm key with the side of your one finger. So here you're using your one finger to press down the two palm keys the D palm key and the E flat palm key. To play E, also press down the E key, which is the highest of the side keys, with the side of your right number one finger, while keeping the rest of your fingers resting on the keys. To play F, also press down the remaining palm key with the side of your two finger. And lastly, to play F sharp, also press down the high F sharp key with your two finger. Now, some older saxophones will not have a high F sharp key, so let's look at these groups of notes again, including some alternatives. To play the high D, press down the D palm key. To play the high E flat, press down the D palm key and the E flat palm key with the one finger. There is a different fingering for E using the front F key. This may be difficult to sound and you may have to adjust your oral cavity to get this note to sound. The F fingering also uses the front F key and moving from the high E to the high F, you just release the left three finger. From here, the easiest way to play F sharp from the front F fingering is to also press down the side B flat key, which is the lowest of the side keys. Also, instead of pressing down this side B flat key, you could press down the high F sharp key instead if your saxophone has one. There are some alternative fingerings that I have not included here, but these are the main ones. 
To descend the chromatic scale, you simply play the fingerings in the reverse order. This is the second section of the video where you'll see the finger charts changing according to a tempo. You can speed up or slow down that tempo by using the YouTube playback speed in the settings just down below. There will be no interruptions and there will be a counting of four counts before you have to start playing. Happy practicing.